Draft Boy Click. If you've ever listened to Lil Peep, Lil Tracy, Cold Heart, or any other rapper from the same style, you've probably heard this producer tag before. So what is God Boy Click or GBC? GBC is a music group that originated from the depths of SoundCloud drive culture. Based in Los Angeles and blew up around 2016, the group included many influential artists like Lil Peep, Lil Tracy, Wicca Face, Prince Eternal, Horsehead, Cold Heart, Magnet, and many more. The group focused on merging music genres like grunge and punk along with new school hip hop elements and is considered as one of the earliest groups to make cloud rap, also known as emo rap, which later on went from being an underground genre to a mainstream one with artists like Suicide Boys and Juice World. In this group, had a direct effect on that. So in this video, we're gonna go through the full Goth Boy Click story. A lot of people would think that GBC was a new thing that started in 2016 or 2017 with the rise of alternative rap genres, but it actually started as early as 2012. The group started with Trax House, a bigger group based in Seattle. The group was founded by Magnet and Kinyara, who was a member of Raider Clan, making Trax House a byproduct of Raider Clan. Trax House included many members like Cold Heart, Horsehead, Look a Face, and Young Bro, now known as Lil Tracy. And they made many projects like Romantic by Horsehead, Miss Calls by Cold Heart, Emo Ocean by Young Bro, and many more projects. Eventually, the group got even bigger and even opened up for Post Malone in 2015. But that's not how it ends because Wicked Face did it in an interview. It just got so big that it was hard to do anything as a group. So with Gothboy Click, the goal was to take music aspect of Thrax House and condense it a little bit. And from there, Cold Heart, who met Wicked Face through Tumblr after being a fan of the band that Wicked was in, which was called Tiger's Jaw. But later on, he left the band to start GBC, which was quite a questionable move at the time. So Cold Heart, Wicked Face, Brains Eternal, and Horsehead, who were all Thrax House members, started the Gothboy Click group as an offshoot of Thrax House. It was named after a beat that was titled Godboy Click that Cold Heart had produced, which then Wicked Face Eternal read the name and he jokingly tweeted, retweet if you're a Godboy Click, and it caught a lot of engagement at the time. And many members from Thrax House joined Godboy Click, such as Magnet, the founder of Thrax House, and Lil Tracy, who joined Thrax House and later on became a fan of GBC and decided to join it. In an interview with Pitchfork, he stated that he owned a secondhand GBC shirt that he wore almost every day to bed in the morning everywhere, and that he looked up to Wicked Face almost like on a stand level. He soon asked Horsehead to ask Wicked Face if he could join, who allowed saying, well, he wears the shirt and off. In 2015, Thrax House officially broke up, with Horsehead's romantic album being their last project. However, the GBC group continued to work on music on their own. The group started as a movement but then became an exclusive group for artists. They focused on making music that were quite innovative at the time, and they were one of the earliest people to make emo rap, using more modern beats on old rock or punk samples. <laughs> The Godboy Click group was considered as an underground group until 2016 when Lil Peep decided to join the group. But how did Lil Peep join GBC? Well, in 2015, Lil Peep was living in and out of homelessness. He stayed at Brennan Savage's apartment and later he met Atlanta rapper and producer Jay Green alongside with Florida rapper Ghost Mane and Houston rapper Greg Zunn and started living with them. While doing that, they started a group called Schema Posse. They released many hits under Schema Posse such as Live Forever, Toxic City, Blacked Out, which featured Omen 13 and his most popular song, Star Shopping. It gave the group and their careers a big boost and even landed them an interview on the No Jumper podcast back when Adam22 was still respected. They continued to release music for a while then. Ghost Mane left because of an undisclosed reason. Later on, Lil Peep left too, giving him an opportunity to connect with other groups and producers. And one of the producers that he connected with was Nedar, who had connections to the GBC like Lil Tracy. Eventually, Lil Peep met Lil Tracy through Nedar, who invited Tracy to Lil Peep's house. And within five minutes, Lil Peep told him that he has an open verse for one of his songs, which was White Tea. And from there, a classic was born. We were like pretty much like glued together before it, any one of us had a crib, a, home, a house or anything. It was easy. It was like, it was like drinking water. It was just like another track. In turn, Nedarb got him linked with Horsehead and Cold Heart. He even got multiple members from GBC on his Crybaby album, like Cold Heart on Big City Blues and Wicked Phase on Absolute In Doubt, which was a big boost for the GBC's careers. Meanwhile, the Gothboy Click was dropping the Yeah It's True album a few months later, and on September 25, Lil Peep officially joined Gothboy Click, a day after releasing his Hillboy album, which included even more songs with GBC members, like the song they play when I crashed into the wall, and Cobain, and Walk Away as the Door Slams, which featured Lil Tracy, and Girls with Horsehead. And overall, with the rise of Lil Peep and Lil Tracy, the Gothboy 
click grew, gained more popularity, making more music, going on tours, and selling shirts. They've even achieved their own style of fashion with the old black clothing thing. I guess they were the opium of their time. And it's safe to say that they popularized an entire genre and brought many people up with them, like Bexy and Fat Nick. But unfortunately, that's not how it ends. After the rise of Lil Beep and Goth Boy Click and releasing hit after hit, things took an unexpected turn. Just like the rise of Goth Boy Click started with Lil Peep, their fall also started with Lil Peep. As we know, Tracy and Peep were the most prominent duo in GBC and the hip-hop scene at the time. But in Lil Peep's case, he got way too big. After their successful year in 2016, Lil Peep signed his first official label with First Access Entertainment and they pretty much did not like Tracy or the GBC and they even went to the extent of kicking Tracy out of Lil Peep's apartment. This obviously upset Lil Tracy and caused him to go off on Peep on Twitter but Lil Peep only showed love back to Tracy. This shows that Lil Peep was probably being controlled by his label, just like a lot of artists nowadays. I'm looking at you, Mario Judah. It's important to note that he was drugged out most of the time, and even on live performances, like in this performance at Ecoplex in Los Angeles, where he was clearly dissociated, and even one of his friends told the story of what happened in that concert. And Chase comes over to me, and he said, I was thinking about canceling the show. Uh, and I said, why? And he goes, because I think he might have taken a little too much of something. And I was like, that's not good. And all of a sudden, everybody kind of empties the, the backstage, and I think there's about five minutes before showtime. Chase runs and, and you know, tries to get the, the stage ready, and we're in the stairwell, and it's just Peep and I. And Peep looks at me, he goes, I don't know if I can do this. And I was like, OK. Um, and some guy opens the door and he goes, um, it's time. I go, all right, and look at Peep. And I'm, I'm fearful that he won't be able to find the stage. Guns on stage, he's able to, to, to stand. Or this concert in Arizona, where he was too high that he puked on stage. And later on, Lil Peep's new managers decided to move him to London, making him even more destined from GBC and having more control on Lil Peep. They took him to concerts on Berlin and many other places. In these concerts, Lil Tracy wasn't even allowed to be on these tours to sing his own parts in the songs that he made with Lil Peep. And none of the GBC members were there, even though they were supposed to rise up together. Eventually, on November 15, 2017, Lil Peep unfortunately passed away from a drug overdose while on his tour. And at that point, Point, the GBC were slowing down, and the event of Lil Peep's death caused big trouble for the GBC. First thing that happened after Lil Peep's unfortunate passing is that a lot of people were pointing fingers at the GBC, saying that they were a bad influence on Lil Peep, and even accused them of plotting his death, which is obviously stupid, but Magnet expressed his frustration with this in Lil Peep's documentary, Everybody's Everything, which was a bad representation for Lil Peep's life, his friends, and the GBC, where they tried to cover up the fact that they were responsible for his death by keeping him addicted, even the specific pills that eventually led to his passing before the tour. And overall, the documentary wasn't true to the real story. So how the fuck is there any type of motive or any reasoning behind some type of conspiracy? I can't even go online, my nigga. I'm looking at my mom in the eyes, bro. Like every little thing that I've ever done wrong just blown up, my nigga. It's the most embarrassing thing, my nigga. And especially when I know the fucking truth, you know? And I know that this shit is just so wrong, my nigga. It's just all lies. I'm just so paranoid, like, may not even be y'all doing. I don't know how this may be flipped, you know? What specific parts of this documentary are gonna be pointed against me and my family? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean it will have nothing to do with you guys. Yeah. It will be completely out of here, bro. You feel me? No, I mean, I mean like, after this comes out, you feel me? Per certain parts that get picked up, you know what I mean? And edited by the conspiracist and, oh, this is why this happened and this is why the, suck my Nigga, that's why this happened, nigga. And Jay Green, who was with Peep and Schema Posse, explained it pretty well on the documentary by saying that half of the people in this documentary are bullshitting and cloud chasing. Peep's death, it's a lot of mystery behind it. What the fuck was everybody doing? Like, I'm not sitting here pointing no fingers. I, I wouldn't know, so I don't know. Like, hey, you need 30 minutes? Okay, cool. You need an hour? All right, a little weird. But four? Four hours? I don't know. I don't know about that. 
I don't know exactly what happened, but to me, something ain't right. I'm telling look, I'm telling you right now. Keep keep this in there. Half the people that's gonna be in this documentary, they bullshitting. They cloud chasing. That's all it is. You have to be aware of your surroundings. Because not everybody, not everybody your friend. So I believe he was starting to wake up. But he just couldn't. Because he didn't get that opportunity to. To summarize the aftermath of Godboy Click after Peep's passing, everyone built their own scene around them and moved to other places. Tracy distanced himself a little bit from the group and was doing his own thing while paying respect for Peep in many of his songs and even getting a tattoo of their castle's EP cover. But he's still cool with GBC. Magnet now works at a rehab center and recovered from his drug addiction, which is awesome to see that he went from such a negative place to a positive and inspiring one. Cold Heart, Fish Nark, Wicked Face still work together, so I guess the GBC is not completely gone. Cold Heart stopped glorifying drugs after Peep's death. So that's also pretty good. A GBC album was announced in 2020, but due to the virus, it couldn't be made. So overall, things ended up getting positive for them, and a lot of these members managed to turn their life around and escape addiction after what happened to Lil P. In conclusion, Gothboy Click stands as a culturally significant name in the hip-hop scene for popularizing a whole new genre known as emo rap. Despite the obstacles that they faced, they made their own paths, leaving a mark on the music industry. Gothboy Click's legacy remains a testament to their artistic influence that continues to inspire new generations of artists. Alright, that was about it. Thank you for watching. Leave any form of engagement if you like the video and all this other bullshit that other YouTubers say to get you to like the video and subscribe and all of that. But yeah, I have been Harvey and till next time.